morning. This is Pastor Amos C. Brown, Senior Pastor of the Historic Third Baptist Church of San Francisco, California. We're very pleased and delighted to welcome you to this virtual worship service emanating from our sanctuary located at 1399 McAllister Street here in the city and county of San Francisco. We are privileged and delighted to also share with you that on this Lord's Day, we have in the sanctuary one of our sons of Third Baptist, Senator Jeff Hayden from Minneapolis, Minnesota, the son of our member, Sister Judith Merrill. We shall be hearing from him later in the worship service. I thank God for this day that we are privileged to join in singing, and I invite you to stand with us as the Third Baptist singers in such a beautiful and skillful way lead us in the singing of the great hymn of the church, Come Thy Fount of Every Blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace, streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Let us all join in singing with one heart, mind, and spirit. Come thy fount. Yeah. 
oh God eternal, God creator, sustainer, the God who is with us. We pray, oh God, this day that you would provide for us everything that we need. We thank you, oh God, for just your blessings. Every morning that we wake up, new, mer new mercies we see. We thank you, oh God, that that streams of mercies never cease. Yes, thank you. We thank you, O oh God, for your love. We thank you, O oh God, for your protection. Yeah. We thank you, O oh God, for your provision. Yes, God. You thank you, O oh God, for your healing. Yes. We pray, O oh God, that even in this moment of worship, that you would overwhelm us with your presence, that you provide us with what we need to just get through the, the week. We thank you, O oh God, for this church family. We thank you, O oh God, for every worker, laborer who's in the vineyard, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, that you would strengthen us to keep doing the work that you've called us all to do. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, oh God. In Jesus' name. We shall be favored with the anthem from the morning. Ride the chariot, rendered by the Third Baptist singer.
scrap time. No, not one. And as we pray this morning, let us remember in prayer the family of our associate member, Sister Geraldine Earp. A few months ago, reached the right age of 100 years old. Her husband, Brother Garland Earth, was a deacon in Third Baptist and an ardent supporter of our seniors' ministry. Let us also pray for the following sick and shut in members. Donna Octavia, Juanita Bryan, Kenneth Eugene Bryan, Diane Roberson, Winifred Bailey, Valerie Fuller, Julia M. Jackson, Derek Johnson, Evelyn Lockhart, Charles Husband, Carol O'Gilvey, Inez Phillips, Samuel H. Roberson, Jr., Joanna Rollins, Mother Jane Smith, Dr. Isaiah Morrison, Hello and Beverly Smith, Lorraine Walker, Rosie West, Gordon Washington, Amy Descalis, Audrey Johnson, Sandra Kaiser Peters, Naomi Ruth Pierce, Ogle Preston Brown, Vera Russell, Pearl Wells, Willie Pearl Williams. And if there are other names that we did not receive, would you please call those names at this time? Francisco. And as the judge 
I repeat praise today. We ought to all be glad. We ought to all be jubilant that God has raised up a dear sister from the Delta of Mississippi, graduate of Jackson State University, earned a law degree. But more importantly, she's a servant of the people. She's about justice. She's about making sure that this sometimes fractured and almost wrecked or broken criminal justice system is put back together again. So let us, I repeat, thank God and celebrate this morning. And also we invite you to confess the shortcomings of this nation, a nation that is still fractured divided, infected not only with COVID-19, but with the virus of racism, with the virus of anti-Semitism, with the virus of nationalism, with this virus of economic exploitation. Let us pray today that God will deliver us finally from the virus of ill will and untruths. But truth doesn't have a chance in this nation now. Gaslighting is everywhere, and especially from the top leadership. So now, judge, come and pray for us as we prayed our prayer of thanksgiving, of confession, of rededication, and intercession in behalf of our honored judge, Marlene Rappel. God bless you. The old Negro spiritual said, every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. All right. Oh, mighty, mighty God. We know you are mighty and merciful. Oh, God, we come now in the name of your faithful and beloved son, Jesus, yes. thanking you for one more day. You. you didn't have to do it, but you did. And so, yes. Lord, we say, thank you. We pray now that you forgive us of all our sins. Erase our faults and failures and love our souls freely once again. Oh God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the under shepherd you've placed here. Oh God, we thank you because look where you brought us from. You brought us up from slavery, through reconstruction, through Jim Crow, civil rights, affirmative action, and sometimes no action. So Lord, we thank you for deliverance. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for being our strong tower. You thank you for being our shelter in the time of a storm and my battle axe. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. If we have 10,000 tongues, they would be insufficient to praise your holy name. But now, Lord, we still have some challenges down here. It seems that number 45 does not want to follow political precedent and causing much stress, anxiety, and confusion in the land. But Lord, we're standing on your word. For you said, be anxious for nothing, but all things by prayer and supplication. We thank you, Lord, for this day. And then, oh God, when the minister comes forward to give us the message of the morning, let's send the glory cloud. And let it rest among your people and those out in stream in video land or watching by live stream. Oh God, send down your power. Give him preaching power. Lord, let him preach. Give him a word from on high. Then, oh God, we've heard the names of all those on the sick list. We ask that you touch them in a mighty way and restore to them the joy of their salvation. Lord, we praise you. We magnify your holy name. For if it had not been for you on our side, well, where would we be? And then, oh God, we want to give you special thanks for giving us one more judge. 
You forgive them to us one at a time, ten at a time. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for all you've done. We ask that you give them more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and be able to, to discern those that are right and those that are wrong. Lord, we praise you. Oh, God, we thank you for the under shepherd you placed here. Give him more vision and more power to preach your word in the years and days to come. And then, oh, God, we ask that you bless your people. Surround them with your favor. Give them more than enough that they can help somebody else. Thank you, oh, God, for all you've done for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask it all. Amen.
to God. And we have no doubt in our minds today about what God can do in and through those who trust God. God works miracles. Not just in the days of Moses, but miracles today. For it is miraculous. As I said earlier, that we have two judges in third Baptist. Oh, yes. Judge Beverly Phillips. The first female African American immigration judge in the state of California. Give her a big hand. Stand up, Judge. And then it's a signal honor that we welcome to the sacred desk. My fellow lady from Mississippi, Sister Judge now Randall, come and greet Third Baptist. We are just, as Brother Fred Haynes would say, elephant elated, hyena happy that we have this coveted opportunity. Come on and greet Third Baptist. This is your church family. Amen. Give a big hand. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. And praise God, for through him all blessings flow. It has been a long road from a plantation in Mississippi to where I am today. When I drove from Mississippi to start law school here, I never dreamed, and I could not have imagined what God had in store for me. Through me and through all of us, God works his miracles. I've been blessed to serve as a chief assistant district attorney, as chief of the homicide unit, as chief of the sexual assault unit, all in the DA's office in the city and county of San Francisco. And for the last 14 years, I had my own practice doing civil rights litigation, representing plaintiffs in age discrimination, race discrimination, gender discrimination cases in my solo practice. And then, God had a plan for me that I did not have for myself. All right. I thought that I would maybe retire from my practice and be in France, speaking fluent French by now. <laughs> but God had another plan for me and directed my steps and waved his arms. And about a year and a half ago, I had an epiphany that what I was supposed to do was to serve as a judge. And from that point, I made my, prepared my application, wrote about my history, acknowledged what I had been ashamed of for so many years, that I grew up on a plantation with outdoor plumbing, that my mother was a maid, that she, when she died at the age of 56, she was working for the Holiday Inn cleaning rooms, and that from that point, I went to Jackson State, worked for four years, and decided I wanted to be a lawyer. When I told my mother that, she goes, what do you mean you want to be a lawyer? Where you get that from? <laughs> well, I just, I'm not going to take much of your time. I just want to say that I praise God. I praise Reverend Brown. <laughs> you know, Reverend Brown is so powerful and serves so many people in so many ways. But when I spoke to him the other night, I said, but you know, you're still my homeboy. <laughs> and always will be. Thank you for being here today. I am so blessed to be able to come back to church and be among you. And I intend to do that more often. Amen. I realize that without you and the grace of God, I can do nothing. Yes, Amen. And, uh, when I was appointed, Justice Jenkins said to me, Merlene, your background is excellent, but what got you this 
appointment is your humility, your heart, your willingness to serve. And he said, never change that. Because if you change that, you will not be the judge that Governor Newsom appointed. I do not intend to change that. I intend to serve with humility, always putting God first, always asking for the guidance of God, Reverend Brown, and the church. Thank you so much. And the Lord just keeps on blessing us, doesn't he? Doesn't God keep on blessing us? Oh, yeah. All right, well, here's a blessing coming again. Brother Jeff, come on up here and say good morning to your family. Yeah, yeah. He was reared here in our youth ministry. Yeah. And uh, Brother Reverend Ronson Ballard is saying amen because they, they were around here in good trouble yeah. around Third Baptist. Let's give it up for Senator Jeff Hayden from Minneapolis, Minnesota. to see you. Uh, good morning, Third Baptist. Good morning. Okay, okay. I, I tell them all around the country I come from a call and response church, and then I get to church, they done forgot how to call and response. But anyways, uh, it's, so good to be, it's so good to be here. It's so, it's so good to see all of you guys. I visited with Reverend Brown uh, earlier in the week and had a good talk and reminded me of from which, where I come from and the opportunities that I've had. And I would say that the 12 years that I've spent in the Minnesota legislature, the last nine in the Minnesota Senate, the last eight as the deputy majority leader could not have happened without this church, without this pastor, without this community, and of course, without my mother. Uh, you guys know her, she's here just about every single day. She was mayor. Um, and I'm so thankful for her. Uh, many of you know, and I, uh, I'll be careful here, but many of you know that my mother had a health scare uh, not long ago, a couple years ago. I know that she's looking at me cross-eyed. We won't go into the details. But I will say this, that it is clear to me, uh, and I wanted to share this with you, that without this church and without God, I don't think my mother would be sitting here today. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. That, that literally, literally, because she is here and this community watches out for her when Members of this church did not see her here. Uh, they knew something was wrong and they started to look for her and eventually uh, got to my aunt, uh, Winna Davis, uh, and called down to Jones and got her, which then led to her and my cousin finding her uh, in distress and was able to get her to California Pacific Medical Center where uh, that day it just happened to be the chair of neurology the chair of neurology who only comes a couple times a month just to keep practice judge, just to you know, make sure that this right. That person was the person who operated on my mother's head, on her brain that day and saved her life. So I can continue to tell these stories over and over, but it is because of God that I'm here. It's because of God that she's here. It's because of this church Amen. Uh, and the work that you do each and every day uh, is why we're why we're, we're going to make it through no matter what 45 uh, is trying to do. So once again, I won't take up much more of your precious worship service, but once again, it is good to be here. And my father says, I don't wake up anymore and ask, what can God do for me? And I don't wake up anymore and say, why did this happen? I just wake up every day and say, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. mother. Stand up, Sister Judith. And, and he was telling the truth. The <laughs> Baptist is her uh, second room to her apartment. But she's always here doing something for this ministry. Doing something for others. And speaking of doing, let us acknowledge again Dr. Butler for the excellent, effective work that he's doing. 
during this pandemic to make sure that persons not only receive counsel in medicine, whether it's physical medicine or psychological medicine, but there is a tripod for he makes sure through our ministry that people will receive that physical food and medicine that is required to experience the abundant life. So to God be praised for the work that he's doing. And we have cadre of helpers, food deliverers, whom we will cite at the close of the service. But in the meantime, we're just going to say, Amen. Let the church say, Amen. Let the church say, Amen. Pastor and good morning church. Good morning church. And also good morning to our virtual live stream audience. So good to see Jeff in the house. We can tell some stories. Good to see you. It is giving time. Just remember that God takes care of all of us and all of our needs. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory and Jesus Christ. Would you believe, church, we are a tithing church. We're a good church. Last year, last week, I was excited because that first Sunday, our offering was the same as offerings in pre-COVID conditions. I'm excited to say that last week was the same. Let the church say amen. We have some momentum going and there is a movement in this place. Let's just keep on keeping on. You know that there are a lot of our members and our friends in the virtual audience right now that are not so fortunate. But keep on praying, keep on trusting. And you may ask, well, what can you do? I, I don't have the financial gifts. You can still continue to pray and trust in our Lord. And if you're willing and if you're able to volunteer, come and help Reverend Butler. Come and help 
Sister Ruth Mays and the volunteers during the week to help continue our food distribution. There are things that you can do. Call the church, call the office at 415-346-4426, extension 1212, and just say, Jamie, I would like to help. And just remember when prayers go up, blessings come down. That's what I'm talking about. I'm a firm believer in the Lord and his, the way that he has continued to bless us. Also, that remember that this coming Thursday, we will have our church business meeting on Zoom. And at that time, we will reveal that list of capital improvements and proje projects that you can adopt. I can tell you right now that there are folks among us right now that have already given their checks and they have already adopted projects. And I just want to let you know that we're looking forward to working with you. Yes. Also, remember that first Sunday we had two young men. One was a plumber and one was a painter. And I want to say right now that they have already started working in the vineyard. Amen. So if you're looking for a plumber, call that same number. If you're looking for a painter, call that same number because they blessed us and we want them to bless you. Amen? Amen. We have to support our own. Yeah. Amen. So remember, we have six to seven more Sundays in this year. Six to seven more Sundays in this year. Let's continue to challenge ourselves to finish this year strong. We just thank you so much for all that you're doing. And you know, the COVID, it's not going anywhere. COVID is still very strong in this land. So let's continue to social distance. Let's continue to wash our hands and let's continue to use our face coverings. God bless. Blessing me, the Lord is blessing me. Oh, right now, He woke me up this. scripture reading for this morning will be found in 2 Chronicles, the 15th chapter, 2 Chronicles 15. If you would stand for the reading of the word, 2 Chronicles chapter 15, 2 Chronicles chapter 15, and I will be reading from the new international version of God's holy word. Again, it's 2 Chronicles chapter 15 in its entirety. Spirit of God came on Azariah, son of Oded. He went out to meet Asa and said to him, Listen to me, Asa and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you when you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, 
he will forsake you. For a long time Israel was without the true God, without a priest to teach, and without the law. But in their distress they turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, and saw him, and he was found by them. In those days it was not safe to travel about, for all the inhabitants of the lands were in great turmoil. One nation was being crushed by another, and one city by another, because God was troubling them with every kind of distress. But as for you, be strong and do not give up, for your work will be rewarded. When Asa heard these words in the prophecy of Azariah, son of Oded, the prophet, he took courage. He removed the detestable idols from the whole land of Judah and Benjamin and from the towns he had captured in the hills of Ephraim. He repaired the altar on the Lord that was in front of the portico of the Lord's temple. Then he assembled all Judah and Benjamin and the people from Ephraim, Manasseh, Simeon, who had settled among them. For large numbers had come over to him from Israel when they saw that the Lord, his God, was with them. They assembled at Jerusalem in the third month of the 15th year of Asa's reign. At that time, they sacrificed to the Lord 700 head of cattle and 7,000 sheep and goats from the plunder that had brought back. They'd entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, the God of their ancestors, with all their heart and soul. All who would not seek the Lord, the God of Israel, were, put, were to be put to death with a small or great man or woman. They took an oath to the Lord with loud acclamation with shouting and with trumpets and horns. All Judah rejoiced about the oath because they had sworn it wholly, wholeheartedly. They saw God eagerly, and he was found by them. So the Lord gave them rest on every side. King Asa also deposed his grandmother, Baakia, from her position as queen mother because she had made a repulsive image for the worship of Assyria. Asa cut it down, broke it up, and burned it in the Kidron Valley. Although he did not remove the high places from Israel, Asa's heart was fully committed to the Lord all his life. He brought into the temple of God the silver and gold and the articles that he and his father had dedicated. There was no more war until the 35th year Asa's reign. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to our God. Amen. Amen. Just before we hear the sermonic hymn, I am very much pleased to present another son of Third Baptist to deliver the sermon today, Reverend Bronson Ballard. The measure of a parent, a teacher, and definitely a church is greatly determined on the basis of what they do to raise up continuously servants of enlightenment, encouragement, empathy, excellence, and an engagement in doing the work of ministry. A lot of folks talk about ministering, but they don't have any administering, anything to add to what they talk about. They only talk about what someone else has done. But we can talk about presently what God is doing through Reverend Ronson Ballard. For our ministry of this congregation is extended to institutions of correction with quality services, holistic services, family services, and he, along with his fellow servant, Reverend Billy Ware, really took 
Dr. Frederick Douglass Haynes Jr.'s vision to a high level. For Fred Haynes Jr. was the first African American preacher to go into prisons, not just to preach, but to lay the groundwork for holistic ministries in order that it might come to pass what they are still talking about and intending to do today. That is, this federal government has been talking and now under this new president, Joseph Biden from Delaware will be an additional fulfillment of recycling of souls for the good of all humankind. So Brother Ronson, thank you for using your gifts, your mind, your training that you received Make sure that you fulfill the words of Jesus. He has anointed me to set the captives free. Set us free, Brother Ronson. Set us free. Set us free that we may know additional truths from God's word. God bless you.
Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise. Come on. Give it up. Praise God. God is so good. The choir sound like they got 70 people up there. <laughs> sounding, sounding real good. No church, we've been through a lot. Yes, Lord. 2020 has been a trying year. Yes. But I give God all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. He is the head of my life, Amen. Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. They lead me, they guide me, they tell me where to go. And so, um, first giving to honor to God. I want to thank my pastor for seeing something in me to allow me to come behind the sacred desk to say a word to you today. I want to thank him. I want to thank Dr. Butler. I want to thank uh, Reverend Phillips for all that they do. They've been here while we've been at home, sitting on the couch, watching from afar. And I just want to thank them for all their hard work. Give them a hand and give all these members a hand. I see Sister Lord back there. I see Sister Alexander back there. They come been here every Sunday while we've been at home um, trying to stay safe from COVID. And um, I want to thank all my friends. I invited Virtual View through the uh, live stream. Thank you uh, for seeing me and willing to hear a word from the Lord. You know, it. When you want a friend to, to hear you preach, sometimes you don't, you just want to go preach and be done with it. But I tell God, God, give me courage. Because I know somebody needs to hear what I have to say today, whether they want to or not. And so I thank God today. Um, I don't want to forget my wife who's here today. Praise God for her. Give my wife a hand. Behind every good man, there's a great woman. Come on, give God some praise. I want to, uh, Reverend Brown, know he got Sister Jane. I don't know if y'all know, we married up. Oh, come on, somebody. She a broker, my wife a broker, we married up. I just thank God, though. Um, thank God for my sister, my big sisters here today. Double Hall of Famer, Clark University, Cathedral High, Double Hall of, give her, give her a hand, praise. Minister in the church, praise God. But I won't keep you long today, but God does have a word for us. Dear gracious Father, as I stand here behind the cross, hide me. Don't let them see me, let them see you. Father God, uh, I just want to say how appreciative I am, Lord, that I'm able to stand here and say a word in your behalf, dear Father God. I know I'm not worthy. I'm not worth two dead flowers with the wings tore off, but I do got Jesus, so that makes me worth something. Amen. Father God, I let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be accepted in thy sight, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We are living in times where if there was ever time that we need Jesus, God, the Holy Ghost, we need him now. America's being tried and tested in to see if she's going to hold up to what she say that she believes in. You say that you built this foundation on, a, on, on Christianity, so God is going to put you through the trial to, to see if you're worthy of who you say you are. And so today, I've titled my text, because I don't want to put my faith in man, Jesus is my president. All right. Jesus is my president. Now, now, make no mistake, my guy won, and I'm not, just, I'm not ashamed to say that I'm a Democrat, my guy won. 
And, and, and I'm glad that he won because we needed change in the White House. Just for the sake of the country. Now, I'm not, I know people voted for Donald Trump. Uh, he had over 72 million people vote for him. So people was interested in his agenda. But for the sake of the country, for the sake of the pandemic, we need a change. Because if, if, if you go to a job and the, and, and the pay grade is too high for you, do you need to do another job? Because right now we need somebody to be attentive to the people in the nation. COVID is on the rise. Racial injustice is on the rise. You know, and now we've come to a point where we are following all these uh, conspiracy theories and now it's, you know, uh, people didn't cheated at the, the ballot box. But I, but I have to explain this because my pastor always taught me to lay my foundation in order to build my house. When we lost in 2016, Hillary Clinton succeeded that night. The next day, President Obama had President Trump in the White House. We gave over all we, you know, we, 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 we did a, a peaceful transfer of power. And so what, we, what would you have to understand is that in order for what you say you build your country on, there needs to be a peaceful transfer of power so that we can show other nations. Because guess what? When America goes, the rest of the world goes. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. All right. And we need responsible leadership. Responsible leadership. That not only goes for the president, that goes for pastors. That goes for uh, school superintendents. That goes for governors and mayors. We need responsible leadership that's going to work in behalf of the people. Reverend Brown gave you a little resume of what I do, but I've been working in the jails for 32 years. I've been working in convalescent ministry for 33 years. I've been on my job for 35 years serving people. All right. And, and we got to get through this. God is trying to show us something. God is trying to show us who we really are. I believe it was God's will for Trump to get in office. Because now we see where people really stand in their beliefs. Do you love your brother like the Bible says? Do you love the Lord with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength? And to love your neighbor as yourself. I don't care what he believes. We got to love one another. When bro, I realize this. I need you and you need me and we all need God. Where does this leave us as a country? As a country, it leaves us divided. I hope I can say something today that will help us get past the politics, the bad politics, and more into our spiritual walk with God. Because we—that's how our system is formed. We 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 do it through politics. We vote. We we cast our ballots. So politics is necessary, but bad politics is dangerous. And so we 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 have to get God is trying to get each and every one of us on the right track. If, if I say nothing more today, know that God is speaking to you through me. So if there's anything that I've said today that you don't agree with, go talk to God about it. Let's get into the word. As a ride, the prophet talks to Asa and tells him per se, if you stick with God, he was going to stick with you but if you forsake God, he will forsake you. And the only reason why the, the prophet, as a rise, the prophet, he's trying to tell the king because kings need advice. They need spiritual advice. They need godly advice. They need somebody to tell them what direction that they need to go into. So the prophet is there to, to guide the king in the direction that he needs to go because guess what? The, the, the nation is crumbling right from up underneath their feet. And we need spiritual guidance from God so that no, we'll know what we're doing. If you notice something, there's a central theme that runs through the whole Bible. Whenever you remove God, 
out of the picture, things usually go bad. When you don't, when you don't, when you don't res understand that every, all that we have, the sun, the sky, the moon, the stars, the reason why you woke up this morning, the reason why you were able to go, the reason why you were able to do what you do, the reason why you got the job you got, the reason, oh, come on, everything is because God allowed it. And God had you in mind when, he, when you woke up this morning. Your, your, your bed when your cooling board. You turned off and put your feet on the ground. You were closed in your right mind. Read the portion of strength. God gave you, God gave you the, the motor skills to get up and brush your teeth and wash yourself and move on into the day. That only happens because God allowed it to happen. We got to stick with God. God is trying to bring a nation back to him. God is trying to bring a people back to him. That's why there's so much we're going through. And just for a brief second, I want to uh, have a brief period of silence for all the COVID patients that have passed away. My brother here, brother Jeff, dealing with all the madness in Minneapolis and Minnesota up there with George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and, yeah. and Rashad Brooks and yeah. Bob Berry and all the summer upheaval that we had this year. Just a brief moment of silence. And the reason why I had a brief moment because we've never been this far away off the track as America. We never had a pandemic. We haven't been through a pandemic. The last pandemic was 100 years ago. But it shows us that God is trying to get our attention. And either we're going to come to God or we ain't. A lot of times we work with me about young people. You know, I speak to my nephews. Or Talked to my nephew the other day. I got a nephew with us incarcerated. I talked to him. Um, you know, and they were raised in the church. Raised in the church. I, once I raised, I took them to church. I talked to them about church. I talked to them about God. But they don't seem to have no sense of commitment to God. And that's a problem. Because when you ain't God, when you don't have God in your life, other things will creep in and deceive you. And so what worries me about the young people that, 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 that they don't go to church, and, and I had a sermon the last time that I, I, I spoke on was, uh, this is the reset. And I was literally telling y'all, don't come out of COVID like you went into COVID. Wasn't nobody going to church, wasn't nobody praising God. We were acting like we were doing everything our own, but why are we in this prayer? Why are we in this space? Get your soul right with God. Because the Bible says, and, I'm, and I'm, 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 I'm laying this because there's other things that, and God going to interfere, and I'm going to have some side boy because God is speaking to me and getting it hot off the press. He's saying, he's telling me right now in, in, in Hebrews 9 and 27, that is an appointed man wants to die, and then the judgment. See, I, I always ask God to let me see the end in mind, and just not let me live for the day. Because in the end, guess what? I got to go see Jesus. I, I got to go, I got to go, go, go answer to God and, go, go, and, and let him tell me what I did right, what I did wrong. Is my name's in the land book of life? You, that's how you think with the end in mind. And you'll alleviate yourself from doing things today that is destructive to your soul. Because it's all about getting your soul saved. I had two people I love that died. My, my nephew died, got killed, got shot, got gunned down. My sister-in-law, his grandmother, we lost a great young man, had a 3.8 average through high school, got gunned down. Another son in the Lord that I, he didn't get gunned down, he just died. So we got, we, that was, one was 19, one was 39. If you're here today and you're still living, give yourself a hand. Give God a hand praise. 
because you, you, you haven't went to go see your maker yet. Back to the word. What Ezra Rao is basically telling Ace is that he wanted him to start putting away the false idols that were tearing down a nation, that he wanted them to keep from doing. You have to put away those false idols that keep you away from doing the work of the Lord, whether that's Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, video game, sex sites, the dating sites. I remember I used to listen to an apostle, uh, apostle Johnny, uh, 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 forget his name. Johnny's apostle Johnny, but he would say people looking for strange flesh. That's what I call them dating sites and sex sites. Ask the Lord to bring somebody in your life that's special. Seek God. Seek the counsel of God if you want somebody in your life. And so what Asa is trying to do, he's trying to restore a king so the king can have the courage to take down the false idols so the people can get back to God. We're too far from God. God is trying to get us back to him. Because in the end, that's what it's going to be about. It's going to be about he's going to come set up his kingdom. He's going to come uh, 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 lead and guide us and be the ruler of our lives. That's how the end is going to be. Oh, I'm always off in Revelation trying to find out what's going on. And this is the signs of the times. He said that the, the love of many should wax cold. He told us this. I got something I got to read you right quick. I put it on this phone. And it says this. And I'm coming from 2 Timothy 4 and 3. That's why I say we have these and good information comes through, bad information comes through. Filter your phone. Because the word of God said, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap up to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall not and she'll be turned unto fables. What's, what's all this with all this conspiracy theory? I don't know. I ain't got no control over nothing. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. The only thing I know, I need to keep my hand in God's hand. I need to put my trust in the Lord. I need to, I need to allow God to lead and guide me in the, in the direction that I should go so I can, so I can make it through this, to this treacherous land. All these pitfalls the devil's setting up for you and, 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 and booby traps and everything else. That's why the Bible tells us to put on the whole arm of God that we might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. See, I'll never preach, I'm sorry, I'll never preach messages that people say amen, hallelujah. I just, I, I just tell the truth. And, if, and, if, and if, it's, if, it, if the word of God is speaking to you, and there's in somewhere some truth in there that you need to get right, then, then get right with God. Get right with God. You have to recommit yourself to God. And what, what you know, the final thing, and it's like.